What is up YouTube and fellow Cybermancers? My name is Nate and thank you for watching the Ectokin channel. Today we're talking about how to pass the CISSP on your first try with some tips and tricks on mastering the exam. Um, my experience is seven years in cybersecurity and I wanna go over some of the resources uh, techniques and strategies I use to prepare and pass this exam on my first try. I think you're going to get a lot of value out of this. So again, thank you for watching. And if you find value in this, please like and subscribe, comment below. I'd love to hear your experiences in the video. But without further ado, let's get into it. So first things first, you're going to need the resources you're going to use to study and prepare for this exam. Um, in my experience, uh, this can be a little controversial, but I absolutely think that it's paramount that you get the official study guide and practice exam. Uh, the reason for this being that the official study guide is a tome of all of the information that you need at exhausting detail. Some people will read through the whole book and take the practice questions. My approach was a bit different. Um, I used it mostly as a resource and reference throughout my studying. Um, and I'll get into more detail on that in, in, in a bit on, on how exactly to use the book, but I absolutely recommend getting that book. I recommend also taking the Certified in Cybersecurity exam. Um, this is a free exam. It also comes with a free course offered through ISC Squared. And this gives a great opportunity for you to get familiar with how ISC Squared approaches exams, what you'll need during the test taking day, um, and also how the material is organized and um, some, some cool things about um, their membership processes that you'll have to go through when you take this exam. So I definitely recommend taking that exam as well. Um, it's, um, I have a video um, on my channel if you'd like to get some more information on how to take and prepare for that exam uh, in a short amount of time. Shout out to uh, YouTuber Justin Sung um, has some great resources on study, study strategies and how to prepare for exams of this caliber. This specific certificate is considered equivalent to a master's degree in cybersecurity in the UK. Um, and I think as you get into learning this material, you'll see just why there is a lot of information. And so um, finding resources like Justin, um, where he can, uh, uh, like if you get stuck on a certain topic, you can check out some of his YouTube videos on how to study effectively, how to approach information so that you remember it and can recall it. Um, when you're taking the exam, I found his information to be very useful. Next, I want to talk about the first month of your study journey. So one thing that I found was critical is because of the breadth of information that you're going to um, approach here, it's good to take an online video course. And I'd say approach this kind of open-mindedly. Don't get too detailed into note-taking. Um, what the idea of this is to really just get your first exposure to all eight domains, um, the information that is involved in those, and then um, also utilizing your resources um, to take practice tests after each domain. And so I would go through um, practice uh, through video courses such as Mike Chapels, prepare for the ISC squared. Um, information security professional certificate exam. Uh, this video is on LinkedIn, um, LinkedIn Learning. I use this one personally. I thought he it was very detailed. Um, there was practice questions included. Um, I will say though that there is a cost associated with that. You either have to have LinkedIn Learning or you can, I think, yeah, you have to have LinkedIn Learning in order to use this course. And I believe um, that's probably about $60 a month um, or something like that, whatever the membership fee is at that time, unless you have a free credit to use that. Um, or you can use, uh, I've heard a lot of people in like Thor Peterson's Udemy courses, which are a little less expensive, but you do have to buy them by domain. Um, so there's additional cost to that. 
Um, if you're not wanting to spend a lot of money on taking video courses, I also recommend Rob Witcher's Mind Maps um, from Destination Certification. It's free on YouTube um, and he goes through each domain um, with great detail and I'll go into a little bit more information about those YouTube videos and other YouTube videos you can watch for free here in a little bit. Um, but I think definitely in the first month what you're going to want to do is take uh, go through each of these courses, go through each domain and take practice questions on those uh, domains so that you reinforce that knowledge, get your first exposure. Don't worry too much about getting the highest score or getting all the answers correct. You really just want to kind of measure your knowledge and exposure to that information um, so that you can set out your next couple of months or, or weeks of study, however much that you need to prepare for this exam. This leads me to my next and most critical tip is practice exams, practice questions. Um, this exam is 125 questions, or sorry, sorry, 175, up to 175 questions. It is an adaptive exam. Um, you can pass um, or finish your exam at 125, um, but the point being that you want to be prepared to take this exam, and what better way to do that than take practice questions? Now, depending on the practice questions that you take, some are going to be more similar or less similar to how the exam is. However, none of these questions are going to be questions that you will see on the exam. The key point of this is to really test your knowledge and test your understanding of the material covered in each domain. Um, and so when you're taking these practice questions, really think about the concepts, think about how they apply to, um, to a professional um, cybersecurity manager uh, in the real world. So try to think it um, as that as more holistically as versus getting hung up on the technical details because that's how ISC Squared is going to try to trip you up by getting you stuck on technical questions and trying to find technical solutions when really what you want to focus on is how a manager would approach this information um, for the business and for the end user um, and thinking about that. So a few that I absolutely recommend um, would be LearnZap's uh, CISSP um, practice exams. There is a free version that you can test out, uh, which covers a few of the questions. But to get the most out of it, I do recommend the premium membership. It's $14 a month. Um, and I would say like I, I use this every day. Wake up, do a few practice questions and taking breaks at work i would do a few practice questions i found this to be a very helpful resource also um, if you don't want to pay for that membership you can do the uh, wiley efficient learning app which comes with the practice um, with your practice like the official practice guide and the official uh, study guide as well has practice questions you can do from each chapter um, which is a mobile app. I didn't realize they had that until later in my studies. If I had known that, I probably would have utilized that just as much. The, the questions are actually pretty similar to what's on Learn Zap. Um, so if you've already got the books, um, I would definitely look into Wiley's Efficient Learning. Um, second, I would say as you're getting closer to taking the exam, um, and maybe within the first two, like the last two weeks of your exam, take Sir Mike's CISP practice test and review. This exam is uh, a pretty true to um, experience simulation. So you're gonna have the same amount of time that you would have on the exam, uh, the same number of questions, and um, the questions are, I'd say pretty similar to what you would see uh, on the exam. Again, not the same, but similar. Um, and um, Mike Chapel, who wrote this exam uh, is the author of the official study guide. Uh, once you finish your test, it's gonna give you a overview of your performance in each domain. Um, and then there's an option to also join a live session with Mike and discuss um, with other students where your gaps in learning are and how to be more effectively prepared for the test. Uh, it is a one-time exam, so you can only take it once. Um, otherwise, you will have to pay the $24, $24.99 to take it again. 
Um, also worth noting Luke Ahmed's study notes and theories. Um, this, I would say, towards the end, it was it's forty nine forty four ninety nine a month. So it is kind of pricey, but you get a lot of material with that. You get um, oh, he's got a lot of video resources. Uh, as well as practice tests and they're a lot more scenario based so he's going to go into a lot more detail on why answers are correct and he's also going to lay it out in a much more elaborate way uh, not the questions on the test won't really look like luke's but they uh the questions that luke does offer are are great ways to reinforce your knowledge and so i definitely recommend that also worth mentioning Bozen practice labs um, this I would say is optional um, because these are much more technical than the, the, the questions you're going to see on the exam and much harder but if you really want to test yourself and make sure that you are prepared for the exam by taking um, and that you know that you're ready uh, and covered the material I recommend taking this um, only if you have the the resources to do so uh, it is $99 for the year um, and so I would say if, it, if it's something that you just want to make sure that you, like maybe you're getting 75 to 80 percent on your other practice tests and you want to really just have that reinforcement that you have the knowledge I would say then go ahead and take the practice test with Bozen otherwise I think you can get a lot of value out of just using the other resources I've listed here uh, another approach and technique that I found to be really helpful in preparing for the CISSP exam was uh, mind maps and creating my own diagrams. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is that as you're going through this material, the, finding visual representations of that information is a little sparse online. So when, when you approach it, creating a mind map by going through each domain, finding keywords, and then drawing connections of each of those things really helps you, um, when it comes to taking the test, kind of navigate through that information in an effective and efficient way. Hand write each of these out. Uh, keywords, drawing connections, circling things, bringing them back to other pieces, and really kind of take trying to think of it as a high level way of coordinating that information in your mind and mapping it out. Um, I would also say like creating your own diagrams um, like I said, was kind of uh, very useful for me because there were some things that I could find diagrams on pieces of information, but not the whole information like the OSI model and how encapsulation works. And then uh, I find I couldn't, but it didn't correlate to like the specific malware that might be relative to those layers. So what I did was create a diagram that had all of those pieces from the TCP IP, TC, IP model, and then the uh, the relative malware, the encapsulation structure, and then um, you know the different uh, ports also that are relative to that. So um, I think drawing that out, having that reference for myself was useful. Again, this is something that like was my own personal approach. Something that Justin Sung uh, in his YouTube videos recommended as a strategy for studying and remembering uh, this high level material. And my final point here, I would be remiss if I did not list my top five YouTube videos that I watched and listened to on repeat during this uh, studying process. Um, number one would be the 50 CISSP practice questions, uh, mastering the CISSP management mindset. Uh, this was my favorite uh, YouTube video um, because the presenter went through each question uh, in detail, went through each each answer and then talked about why it was the wrong wrong answer or right answer for the question and, and how it applied to using that manager's mindset uh, to answer the question and how to be prepared for that. Um, the second is going to be the CISSP exam cram uh, full course and uh, the supplemental videos as well. I think I listened to that like maybe six or seven times. I like to go out on runs and ride my bike and I would always listen to that while I was out um, you know doing my exercise for the day and so I found that to be 
um, a really good resource as well because it kind of covers just about everything you can you can run into for the CISSP um, by each domain. Um, also, I, I mentioned this earlier, the uh, mind maps um, by Rob Witcher and destination certification, also a very good resource uh, for covering all the information uh, as is pertinent to each domain and topic uh, for that. I would also say the InfoSec Guardians uh, CISSP scenario based practice questions. Um, this one was good for going through the practice questions. It's just like another resource for reviewing practice questions. It is AI generated from what it seems like. Uh, so if you don't like listening to a um, AI generated voice thing, then that's probably not the one for you. But I didn't mind it so much because I, I felt that the, the structure of the questions is really good, the review. And um, I think one point that it really drills into is like, read the full questions, read each answer, and then read the question again, and then uh, isolate the questions that you think would be uh, most likely incorrect, and then choose between the two highest uh, probable answers. And um, that was a good strategy that I found to be useful uh, when approaching the test. Now, when it comes to taking the test and understanding what the behavior of a, um, a test like this where it, it's um, it's not just a single list of, of possible questions, it's a test that is adaptive and it learns um, and gets harder depending on how you answer a question and how many answers you can correct. I have to say CISSP test taking tactics, um, successfully navigating the adaptive exam uh, from the SANS Institute and Seth Meisner or Meisenar, I'm probably saying that wrong, but I thought that was a really good video. Um, if you really just want to understand what the test is, is going to feel like and how those tests works and some of the engineering behind that, just really interesting anyways uh, to kind of understand what all goes into those uh, types of tests and creating questions and responses based off of weighted um, metrics. So. It, those are kind of my key recommendations and tips for mastering the CISSP exam. One thing I do want to know too, as you get closer to the exam, make sure to take breaks. Don't burn yourself out um, to where you start second guessing your, your, your approach and your knowledge. Let yourself uh, take time to rest and uh, trust that you have learned the material and that you're familiar with it and you're going to be successful. And don't let the doubts get to you during the test day. I know that was one thing I struggled when I hit the 125 questions and then went to 126 and I was like, oh shit, I may have failed this test. And then I wouldn't let myself believe that and I kept going through the questions and I finally passed it at 175. But just because you get to 125 doesn't mean that you're doing poorly, it just means that the, the, the exam wants to test you further on the knowledge that you've demonstrated. So. I hope you found this information useful and if you'd like to find out more check out my medium article linked in the description below that highlights everything we went over today um, with even a few more references to aid in your study uh, journey uh, as you prepare for the CISSP. Uh, make sure to like, like subscribe and follow. Join the Cyber Mancer community. We're happy you're here. Thanks for watching.